Okay, good evening, Nissan Bulevinaka. Thank you for listening in, tuning in. Bulevinaka Trey, Sebu here, on uh, coming to you live on Vaitalanoa number Tinikavitu. And um, coming to you live from Fiji. And I've also got my wonderful, beautiful co host, the incredible. MC Trey is in the house. Bulevinaga Trey and Bulevinaga to everyone listening in from wherever you are. Um, thank you for tuning in tonight and let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to find out where you are. Um, give us a thumbs up. Uh, this is an interactive session and it's our last show for 2021. So thank you for joining us. Please share it on your page as well so people can tune in. We've got a jam packed freestyle show coming up for you. And of course, Miss MC Trey is the queen of freestyling, and I'm joining her to try and hang on to a code as she freestyles all the way through. Bulevinaka, Miss MC Trey, where are you coming in live from? Bulevinaka, everyone, coming to you live from Darug land, um, the land of the Waimali clan, and good to see you're all hyped. It's our last show, and you're talking about the freestyle. It's all about the freestyle and Come going on. with the flow, right? I guess it's the holiday vibe, isn't it? Yes, it is, you know. We're going to we'll, um, put on some, what should we put on, Christmas music since we're a few days from Christmas and some, or some New Year's music. Let's go forward. Let's play some New Year music, right? Sounds good. All right. I'll put some nice New Year's music in the background for us. That's apparently some New Year's groove. Yeah. Oh, it's spinning up. Interesting. <laughs> hey, yes. um, shout out to Fanny listening in my mom listening in and she's on that same island that you're on Sev, just on the other side of the island is that right oh, yes yeah, so you lucky people in your tropical um Paradise. attire i just took off my jacket i had a jacket on earlier i just took it off i'm wearing track pants when is i went out today there? it's cold um we had sunshine this morning. I was in Wollongong with our good friend Mary Jane and the Matsavai family. They had their end of year thing. But the, it was sunny and then it started raining and it was so cold. So I had to jump in the car and come back because me and the cold. Wow. You know, we don't go well together. <laughs> wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's been so hot and the weather is just crazy, you know? Very extreme yes. changes. Yeah. Now, um, for those that are listening in, well, it's, it's 26, 27 degrees here in, in Fiji. It's beautiful and balmy in the west, in the burning west. And I've gone shades darker from being out in the sun, loving it. Um, yesterday and today were beautiful days. So loving beautiful. it over here. I won't, I won't carry on too much about it because it might upset people if I carry on about how beautiful and perfect it is in Fiji. So um, no, for no, those listening in... It'll inspire in, people to come huh? and visit. It'll inspire okay. people to come and visit. Excellent. Good idea. Yes. Yes. That's what we hope. Hey, as well. um, for everyone that... Oh, great. Can you actually see people chilling in? Because I can't see any chat. Any um, chat. Phone. Ah, is that where you're I looking? I kind of monitor from? when. Yeah. Well, well, I can't really see. You know how normally when people come on the chat, and we can see them, um, can't yeah. actually see people on the chat for whatever reason. Mm. For for some reason, for those listening in, we. have Facebook is doing weird things. We didn't even know that the program uh, was appearing. I don't know how. At the beginning, there were like seven people that came on, Trey. So I don't know how they found out 
comment on the on the stream wherever you're listening in from if you're coming on through facebook or on youtube um on the facebook fiji day facebook page let us know how you're actually tuning in because um it wasn't bringing up the notification or showing up on our events so we were just freestyling going let's just get on and let's see whether it appears or whether it doesn't <laughs> yeah yeah um I can't see where people are actually commenting from, Trey. Are they commenting through PG Day? Okay, cool. I might go yeah. in there and have a look. Is that where? Yeah. Through the PG okay, cool. Day page. So, Sev, um, you know, Christmas Day has passed. How has it been? How was it for you over in Fiji? Christmas was amazing here. Um, we had a beautiful uh Christmas Day, we decided to have brunch. I had some friends over and uh, got friends visiting. And so we had a beautiful Christmas brunch. And then we decided to have a pool party. Um, for those of you that, for those of you that have seen my, <laughs> my Facebook page, you would have seen some of our pool party. And then we got sunstroke from being out in the sun. Fiji sun is very oh. hot in the West. So, but we had 50 plus uh, sunscreen on and so forth, but it was a hot day, right? We're out in the sun all day, so we got a little bit. And then, um, you know, have a little bit of drinkies and so forth. And then we went out for an early dinner over to Dana Road. So, because nobody wanted to cook, so we decided to go out for dinner. And guess where we ended up, Trey, afterwards? Where? We ended up in Wailola Beach at Sailor's and it was pumping so you know the curfew in fiji is 12 o'clock so by 10 o'clock last drinks 11 o'clock so you gotta start earlier right 11 o'clock it's last find your taxi oh, oh man yes exactly find your taxi so we decided 11 o'clock we're at the door um we stay got... away from the viva <laughs> yeah you know it's actually really really good it was very friendly everybody was um, everybody was having a great time. Oh, this thing is playing the wrong video. I've got the wrong video on Facebook. Anyway, okay, that's weird. It's bringing up weird things. Maybe try your your several page, uh, Facebook page because you'll be tagged on it. But Are um, you? yeah. Am I your... okay? So yeah. So okay. um, what's good? You got to have food at home and then go out to um Wailolo beach right which is in nandy and it's in the suburb called newtown i think it is um which is you know near the in between the airport um and the beach and denarao as well so that's kind of the spot where all the locals hang and the beach you know Wailolo, it's like is that black waters but um it's got a nice view. You see the Black Beach. Giant. Black Beach. Yeah, so it's the sand isn't that um the sand that tourists would be used to, right? That golden or the white sand. So but it's known for its um restaurants and its nightlife down there on the beach. And look, I've spent many New Year's Eves there. It, that's the place to be if you're in the West, you know, down there because they have bonfires people have their picnics there and everyone just meets and mingles from the restaurants in the venues and the hotels there it's like a mini yes. bali and i've noticed they've really stepped it up they've put a lot of work into those um venues in that area yeah they've done a lot of improvements you should see a lot of because you know since COVID, there's been a shutdown and now they're rebuilding it back up so there's a lot of new venues opening up um you mentioned bamboo is that the bamboo it, um miss whatever mcshark that's a cool handle isn't it mentioned bamboo um i suppose they're talking about the bamboo what was that called in Wailolo? bamboo yeah bamboo, bamboo. Beach club or something yeah yeah bamboo something right uh well bamboo is no longer it is now called the beach club so Walolo. and yeah and trey you were there recently as well we were there been there a few times fantastic place to go 
in Canada. Mm. Um, the food is great there. Yeah, it's a new establishment, new. Um, um, somebody new is um, is running that place. His name is Nathan, who owns the the new venue, and it is lovely pumpkin. chap. He is he's a lovely chap, isn't he, Nathan? So it's great yes. to see that he's spicing the place up and changing the vibe. Yeah, yeah. So it's really really cool, really really great place. What about you, Trey? What did you do over there for Christmas? Christmas. Well, you know my. My family um, are in Fiji, my close family, and, you know, I've got a few family members here, but a lot of extended family. So visited, like, um, with uh, my daughter's um, family side and then just went around and visited some relatives up in the Rift in Penrith as well, my cousin and my auntie and so forth on Dad's side. So awesome. had a very chilled one. Yeah, oh my gosh, but so much food. There's always just so much food. And, you know, yes. I love that feed, but I always think the next day, like, can I donate this food somewhere to somebody? Because, you know, I don't eat that much and my daughter doesn't eat that much either. Um, yeah, but, you know, I guess this time, because we haven't been gathering in a while, I've noticed a lot of people really went over and above with the food and the cooking, right? Because it was just so much. Um, but yeah, and I had, you know, I was home early and just had the leftovers, you know, the next day. Yesterday is always good, right? Um, didn't do the Boxing yes. Day sales as no, I usually no. do. Yeah, and I, I didn't want to go out and shop and do all of that. I was like, oh gosh, I've got what I need. I don't really need to go out and get much more. Just a few necessities, you know? Right. Yeah, so that was my yes. um, last couple of days. And, and what, yeah. is the, um, what is the mo mood like there? With okay, so... You know, with everything means, that's going on. You know, with all the cases, right? It's over 6,000 in the last 24 hours. Wow. Of cases, and people can't get tested, you know, so there's a lot more in community. Uh, I know I know so many people with COVID. Um, so I'm, that's why I guess I'm not really going out much as well and just limiting my movements. Um, but they've brought in new restrictions as well. So now you have to sign in when you go to places and they've reduced the numbers that can gather in venues. So it's back down to the right? one person per two square meter rule. Yeah, because I don't think they want to lock down, you know, because lockdown, yeah. that's just going to, I think that's to send people, I mean, it's impacting people's mental health, right, already. So another yeah. lockdown, I think that's going to be, very tra 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 tragic for so yeah. many and for businesses but also just people having to be locked in their homes yeah Everybody's so they are right? restricting, there, there are a couple of restrictions but they're managing and they're just telling people to you know monitor your symptoms and um giving people advice on how to care care for each other you know the hospital yeah. is a full yeah so we have to, we're not, we're definitely not out of the woods, but there's a lot of confusion. People are wanting to stay home. Some people want lockdown. Some people don't want lockdown. Some people are acting like nothing's wrong. So there's just a mix of energies. It's very confusing. And then it's this time of the year as well, right? So it's like, I find it's a very confusing time. All we can do is stay safe, mm. you know, check in on each other. Luckily, you can get a lot of those at-home tests, you know, the COVID tests. Um, yeah. I found one in Kmart. There's ones in the service stations, you know, and we're just testing ourselves at home. If we go out and mm. we hear that there's a case, we come home and we test before we go and visit family or friends. So we're taking the responsibility on ourselves to do that. You know, because I don't want to be passing on. Like, I might be healthy and recover, but I might pass it on to a, a relative or a family member that's not well. So that's my responsibility, and I think most people are mindful of that as well. So it's quite different, isn't it, to when you left civil? Oh, 
Hello. Are you there? Okay, so um Am I back? Yes, you, you are back. It's popping in and out a bit. Um the other thing that I did, Sev, was, um, and to those that are listening in, I caught up with some um, two amazing artists when I was in Fiji a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to upload. Okay. Um. So while while you upload, I'm just going to um tell people about this project. So basically. Um, Seville played me this album of this group called VT Ones. It's a compilation of Fijian artists and I had to find out who it was and find out more about this album. So it um, turns out two, you know, producers, musicians, um, Steve and George, um, amazingly have, you know, been in, in the music industry in Fiji for quite a long while. So we got to have a chat with them. Um, I thought I'd play the interview, Sev. Should I chuck that on? Yes, please. Let's okay, go. so this is um, the producers from V, the capital. It's it's the letter V, the letter T, the number one and the letter S, and you say VT1. So hopefully this plays okay. Check it out. Everyone, thank you for joining us. MC Trey here. We have two very special guests all the way from Fiji. I brought some of their music back. Um, I saw I heard this album called VT Ones. Um, we were able to talk to two um individuals that were that are that helped put this album together. Introduce yourself, guys. Bula. Uh, my name is uh, George Washile. Uh, and uh, I go by the producer name Tropic Thunder. I'm uh, from the island of Rotuma here in Fiji. Just want to thank uh, Selma Tree for having us on this uh, for this interview. Thank you. Bula, my name is uh, Stephen Varekula. I'm from Tabiuni Island in uh, the northern part of Fiji. And uh, thank you to MC Tree. So tell us, like, how did the album come about? I was working on some uh, jingles for TV commercials and uh, I managed to connect with uh, these uh, four artists. I was like, uh, why, not we, why don't we work on some side projects just for our personal, you know? And so one of the girls, uh, Taufa, she actually uh, was uh, vibing to one of the beats and she, uh, she, we put down her melody that she created on her own. And then uh, Steve came into the studio and he put the words to the melody that uh, Taufa came up with. And so like everything was trial and error. We just like took it step by step and then just asked the four artists if they'd like to be in a collab album. And that's with myself uh, producing the music and uh, Mr. Vera Kula here who composed uh, all songs in, uh, in Fijian. So the whole album is in Fijian. So basically you're working with these four artists and then decided, okay, we'll do a collaboration. The artists then already had some experience, right? With singing and performance. I think uh, three of them have like, they've performed, they've done uh, live performances before. Uh, just one of the girls, uh, she's actually new to the scene. She hasn't performed. Too good. And then Steve, so you, you helped write the lyrics for all the songs? Yeah, lyrics and uh, the melodies, melodies as well. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's why it sounds so like it's a package. You know, some albums, th th there's a lot of difference, right? Whereas this one, you can tell it's connected. There's common themes in the lyrics but also the music and then the way that the music is mixed you know mm. like i've been listening to the whole album over and over and i can tell a lot of time went into it because there's like all these little sound bites and little references you know to like i almost see it too like that tango nika song you thought this song could be used for like a history lesson 
for stu- Fijian mm. students around the world, you know. And I was all, almost thinking, like, are you going to print the lyrics? Because I can, you know, for me, because I work with a lot of young people, I do workshops, and I thought I I would use that song to talk about the history, you know. And then it's a way of getting the young people interested, you know, on how you know we came to Fiji. But anyway, that that's one of the ideas that came up when I was listening to it. But this would be a good, op- you know, ideas for you, gang, when you start doing your tours and all of that, you know, around the around the world, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, how long did it take for it all to happen? So we met up with the four singers uh, towards the end of last year, and so what we did was we released uh, their debut single, the four of them. When they released their four singles. Like we were telling them to tell the public, like just to look out for a collab album of the four of them. Eh? So yeah, everything started uh, late uh, towards the end of last year, and so when uh, this this year started, we were all uh, geared up and ready to work on the album, and then uh, we had lockdown here in Fiji, and so uh, we couldn't do anything. And then so as soon as the lockdown lifted, we just like told the artists. We need to get in the studio right now and start working on the album because we've promised everyone and everyone's looking forward to it. And the other thing was, uh, um, Steve's, uh, so when the lockdown lifted, I asked Steve to please bunk at the studio so that he could finish all the songs. So he was here for like two months and uh, it was good to have him home and uh, working on the music and uh, just like feeding off uh, ideas, eh? creative uh, ideas. So your gang really lived and breathed the album. So still, like, you know, when you write the lyrics, how do you get ideas for the words? Uh, it's just, I listen to the beat that uh, Mr. Tropic Thunder made. Whatever feeling I went to, yeah, then I just start writing. And then uh, I just hear it and the topic will come to my mind and I just put it into writing. Do you sing as well yourself? Like you've got your own projects uh, before yeah, this. I, uh, I used to rap before. It was uh, there's a guy called E3 and uh, Cracker. And, uh, all of it to me, right? Blue soul, I'm a KVT. Brave heart like a Fiji body. I rap my land, my flag, my family till I R.I.P. CBM to the L.A.U. No my V.T. Tovu. Do this for the mainland, super city, right to Kandavu. All of those uh, experience from hip hop, like how to write songs, it has helped me to this uh, experience for this uh, album. Like most, even some of the songs, it's just like off the top. Like uh, the singers would come here and like, uh, I just write it for them on the spot. Like, I can just freestyle. Write the look, and then the look. Yeah, freestyle. Mm. Just like hip hop. And uh, it's, it's, it, it was easy because uh, like it's in the feet, uh, our language, like uh, mother tongue. How I write the songs is like, uh, I just put like the, how I wanted to the flow in my head and then I just put the word season. So you both have like this um, foundation, like listening to hip hop. And I guess that's why the sound of the album is so different. Actually, my friend played it for so. me several. Yeah, and I said, this, I, I was just, this album is like international, you know, like anyone around the world could listen to this, you know, because of the sound. Mm. But then also the words, I mean, you know, as rappers, when we write our lyrics, right, that there's a certain pattern, how we write. Mm. And then when we put that into singing, it sounds different, you know, like mm-hmm. the way, where we place our words on the beat. And I noticed mm. that in the singing, you know, the syllables, but only rappers or pre- hip hop people would pick up on that mm. stuff, you know. So now mm-hmm. it makes mm-hmm. sense. Wow. Very good. There's something different for Fiji, right? And and I remember that on a video. I think we still pump that one <laughs> over here. <laughs> that, that was classic Fiji hip hop back then. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I remember getting an email. I remember getting an email, but I've still got the email. And when that song came out, that someone sent it out to all people interested in hip hop around the world, like Fiji gang. So I remember getting an email about the song with that uh, any is it me money and yep yeah, e cracker i remember that mm-hmm. wow well, g- good to see that you're going at you know still building and doing well and you know still creating music um 
What, what are your plans? Like, what do you want to do with this album? This album for not only the four singers, but also for the two of us, it's like our portfolio. Eh? Like we're trying to show uh, the audience and whoever's relevant or who's listening to it, that, like this is our portfolio. This is what we want to, uh, what we want to show that we can create because uh, most of the jobs we, we're doing like like I get paid for making music, but uh, like uh, sometimes it's not like uh, what I want to create. Uh, like because the client is paying for it. Like sometimes my ideas uh, it's not what they want, and so then from there it stops becoming my project. Like something that that I'm happy that I put out. But with this album, all of the like like you have the vocalist there, you have the song composer there, and the beat maker. All of us, we, we are doing like our uh, our own part, eh? and no one's uh, telling this one how to do his job or like you know. Uh, everyone in this uh, formula is given the creative freedom to do it how you want to do it. Uh, when we're recording the artist, and uh, most of the time they they ask us, eh? "Was that okay?" Or and we are both like, "We can't sing for shit." So if it sounds okay to you and you feel it and and it is what it is. And that's the same for like when I'm making the beat, uh, because of Steve's hip hop background, I normally ask him, he, he, like he has to vibe to it so that he, his uh, ideas for writing will, like it'll, you know, like he'll vibe to it enough that he, the lyrics just come like that. But uh, yeah, for this project, we all like had the freedom to do what we wanted to do. Like I'm happy that we put out this album, just showcasing what, like showing everyone this is what we can do for me and Steve this is the uh, like the foundation of this project eh? when I have like a record label next year discover some uh, unknown artists there's a lot of talent in TV so that's what we're aiming for like to create the opportunities for the youth and uh, make them yeah. sing and hopefully they'll get money and uh, make, from, a living, yeah, make a living like from gigs and stuff and at the same time we also selling like uh, the music and we can have some money for our, to feed our families as well wow i Love this. How good was that, everyone? Um, if you haven't heard the album, Spotify, wherever you get your music from, VT1, V-I-T-I, and the number one. And that music is just, um, I saw them perform that song live. You know, we've been playing it on replay, right? It's my favorite album at the moment. It's right up there with anything on the quality of it, the production, the composing, the vocals, the music, everything is amazing, right? Um, <clears throat> check out their music, follow them on Spotify. Um, you'll be hearing a lot more from these guys, I can assure you. Um, Trey, thank you for, for sharing that interview. And it's just beautiful to see this kind of production. And at the end there, they were talking about music in Fiji and, and trying to create opportunities for musicians and to showcase that this level of music is coming out of Fiji, you know, it's right up there. Um, as far as the sound, a lot of people are listening to it everywhere. I had the privilege of what perform um, on last week on Saturday and Trey, they were just, per, you know, the, 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 in the vocals of that guy, he sang Tanganyika um, and the band was, he was backed by the gang. Um, they was they were playing for him. They were the musicians, the band, the gang, and then the vocals was it. It was just I was just like rocking in the place. And the funny thing was, a lot of people in in Fiji had not even um, heard of them. So if you want to go check them out as well, if you look at the Christmas production that was done by Fiji One, I believe um, the Sabuto Christmas special, you'll see them performing in the in the production. <clears throat> And they performed the song Tanganyika and a few other tracks. But well done to them. Congratulations. And uh, I'm so glad this music is here. And it's, <clears throat> it's just 
can't say enough about how beautiful their music is. So true. So talented. And, you know, Sev, interesting. Oh, and Bulletin Mosese and up there in Queensland. Um, but interesting, Come to see you, Mosese. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Mosese, that song, Tanganyika, sorry, Trey, just to mention, it mentions the our ancestors traveling through, and it talks about the whole uh, traveling through, and then it talks about what they in there. So uh, they, they sing about the lyrics from uh, the people of Arate, which is where Moses is from. Anyway, Trey, what were you saying? Yeah, it, uh, interesting track. And um, I was saying to them, you know, those lyrics, um, we need the lyrics. And it's a great resource to teach young people about the history because the music sounds pleasing to you know, it's it's contemporary. It's got the Afrobeat style, but it's got Fijian language, you know, so it's a great way of teaching language, but also history, you know, because so right. it's, it's appealing to young people. And it is on YouTube. Um, Moses is asking, is it on YouTube? And then it's so it's the letter V, the letter T, the number one and the letter S, VT ones. So basically it's on Spotify and then they do have an album for sale. I think it's on VT Cart um, that people can purchase. And the, so the producers are those two guys that we spoke to and the composers. So that's Steve and um, George, who's also called Tropic Thunder. And the singers are Billy T. That's who you would have seen several, Billy T, Ratu, Naomi and Tolfa. So, um, Amazing. I just love it. Love what they're doing. Yes. It is just goes off. Like when the when the, the chant comes on and you know they're talking about all that, it's just powerful. A lot of people saw it for the first time. So interestingly, uh the words go, the, the starting words are Anandrano my Tanganika, right? Um, and they talk uh, when they're pronouncing it, they say Tanganika, right? Which is the right Fijian word, which means where you can and the whole history of that and so um, right. Tanga, I just noticed that today yeah so Tanganyika yes. is the African name of the uh, that in um, where's that it's in terms of, um, and coastal there and there is a place there called Viti where you can actually on Google you can trace this and if you speak to people from Tangan Tanganyika, they will tell you that they have connection to Fiji. Like I've met people from Tanganyika who said, you know, and um, it's on. Well, my, my brain is, is blank. I'll, I'll let people know a bit more about that. But, but um, yes, yeah, so the Fijian word is Tanganyika. So when they sing it, they say, and I'm going to make Tanganyika, so the Ika, they double the I if you're listening in, in for it, right? So to be to pronounce the Fijian version of that, the right Fijian word. Very interesting, right? And it talks about that whole journey of them coming through. And there's and a lake, an amazing right? album. Lake, there's lake. a song there about... Yeah. Lake um, Tanganyika. And near Tanzania and Zambia. Well, it is in... It's in, it's in Tanzania. Um, okay. And... I'm trying to think of the place. It is called Zanzibar. So Zanzibar is actually in the in the on. It's an island just off the coast. It's an area there, just in that part. It's part of Zanzibar. And as you go, that's in the ocean. But if you go inland, you then get the Viti. I think there's a place there called Verata or something like that. It's really really interesting to even map that out and match. The names and stuff. So very interesting. Yeah, very interesting history there. So and so the story is that when they came off the ship, they headed up towards Verata, is it like from Vunda, and then they went up. Yeah, the story is is that they are then um, the Viri comes in because they were they were basically they went out fishing. The story goes is that they went out fishing, a tribe of them went out fishing and they got the sea and then they just kept on traveling right through and they ended up in Fiji. 
that's a story around that. So it's very interesting. Yeah, interesting. a little bit of history there, but we should get somebody to speak to that, like uh, our archaeologist and anthropologist, right? Friend, they can yes. talk more about and our cultural advisors there at the ministry in, in government. Um, we should yeah. actually link that up with. Um, I think it's Mr. Sevundrendre, Simeone Sevundrendre, a wealth of knowledge and always a pleasure to speak with. So we'll try and link up a Tolanoa with him as well in the new year. But Sev, while you were talking, I managed to find this. So this will help, right? That's Zanzibar down the bottom. And then it's showing the links there to Lake Tanganyika. Yeah. Can you see? And Burundi yes, up the top. Yeah. And then see how you come in from Zanzibar and you travel through there. And then you yeah. Lake Tanganyika and there's a place there called Viti, um, yeah. which is closer towards Zanzibar. And the, <clears throat> and the discussion is that they travel then from, from there, from Viti to Tanzania, which is the name where Viti comes from apparently, yeah. Beautiful. There you go. I love that. And, you know, I love when music sparks these deep conversations, you know, and also we learn a bit listening to this song. And it's a beautiful song to dance to, the whole album, right? So congratulations to Tropic Thunder, to Stee and the musicians. And like they said, it's a foundation and we look forward to more amazing things happening for them and their yes. musical community because it's a new Absolutely. style of music, you know that they're bringing, the Fiji version. But Seb, speaking of, of music, you also went to this show last, um, the Christmas that's, show? Yes, that's the one I'm talking about. Um, so they're, they're, they're the um, VT1, or that the music that we heard, Tanganyika and so forth, was performed at that event. So that's part of the Savuto's Nailoloma Christmas Fiesta. And um, it was played on Christmas Day, as they do every year. Um, and on can, TV? Believe, yeah, on television. And I believe you can watch that as well on Facebook or on their website and so forth. Yeah. Beautiful. So that was a fantastic event. Fantastic event. Um, I wish I could share some of the videos from there. But um, the, uh, the bandwidth is playing up from where I am. So, can't, But I'm going to show you where I am. Can I show you a photo? Yes, sure. Show Look us some it. of the Fiji images. Oh, I love that. Was that today? That was today. I took that this evening as I did my uh, my beach run. Um, yeah, so this is what the sunset was like this evening. Don't mean to make anybody Jay, but that's a little bit um, of the sunset from Nandi. Come to Fiji, travel in. You won't, you won't regret it. So come in and this is what you got to look forward to right there, Trey. A beautiful sunset. And I'm just going to show, I'm showing off that sunset. That's this afternoon. Um, the weather here is great right now. And look at food. Talking about food, Trey. This is a bit of food porn, yeah? Food porn. There you go. That Yum, was bro, my... bro. Yeah, so this is a total vegan meal right here. So that is a uh, row row that you see there on the left. And then you've got some, uh, some, um, really, my brain has gone a little bit. Uh, otter. 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 So the, otter. the otter's like a fern. It it's is a, a fern. fern. I yeah. think it's fig tree fern. And then the row row is the leaves from the taro plant. So taro and dalo is the purple. Um, staple that most islanders eat there and the, the green leaves next to it is the actual leaf right that's connected to the ndalo plant yes, ro, it's ro, from ro, ro. Yum. yes. so that's ro, ro, bakalolo. and guess what you'll be very proud of me I scraped five coconuts to, to go into the lolo <laughs> very so good me. yes Oh, you guys cooked it yourself? Yeah, that's all cooked at home. So we had a friend over, a beautiful friend who came over and she taught us how to do it. I mean, I sort of know how to do it, but it was great for her to cook it for us, prepare it. 
Um, then we just had different chores. So mine was to scrape the coconut. That I can do. Amen. And That's then a workout. Doing the, it is a workout. That's for your, your arms, right? Man, it worked out of sweat. <laughs> I well, broke into a sweat. So I tell you, really, that's really not cool. easy, right? When we were younger, we did it, right? But if you don't do it for a while, it's a bit of a job. <laughs> Come on, Moses. Five coconuts for me is a big oh, deal. Oh, God. You know, he's saying that five, <laughs> hey. I should have done five dozen. You know? <laughs> Um, when I'd you like go, Mosesi, you... he'll scrape the coconut. He'll do the logo. You know what? Seville will do the logo. All right, Mosesi, you, you want a competition? Game on. I will challenge you to a speed cutting you competition. When you're in Fiji, bring that on, and I will challenge you for who can scrape five coconuts um, the fastest. We'll have a coconut racing competition, yeah? And Trey is going to get a prize to the winner. Yes, Trey? Is it coconut rum or something? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, so that's a little bit of that. You know, I don't like to show too much of it because people get upset. They think you're trying to show off too much about the food and so forth. But that's a little sneak no. peek of what it was like. I think it's important to show and then it's, you know, reminds people because we can make that stuff here as well, right? We can, I mean, I've got the leaves growing in the back. Most people are growing that stuff now in their backyards. We just don't have the fresh coconut. Well, you can That's... scrape it if you want to, but it's not easy to no, we buy did the it there. scraper. We, we did it there. You can find it in the Fiji shop in Newtown. And you can get the electric You can find it in another scraper. Fiji Pacific shop. Yeah. Yeah, but if you can just buy one of those things, cut in a new, old-fashioned way, go buy it from the Fiji market in Newtown, I know stocks it because I bought one from there. And if you don't want to do that, then go to Flemington Markets where they've already scraped it for you and you can buy it in bags. And then you can do your own fresh michi so you don't have to get the tin or the, you know, the, the thingy, right? Yum. There's nothing like doing it fresh. So... Can you imagine fresh otter from the market? Cost you like three dollars a bundle. Row row. Love it. Two, three dollars a bundle. Look at the food that we get to be blessed with. Yeah. So Amen. um yeah, so that was um that's how it's been so far for me. It's good to be able to share that. And I'm glad you're sharing about the Fiji music. Um and what else do we um what else do we want to talk about? We've got 15 minutes Maybe, left in the show. I think, um, you know how the borders are open in Fiji? Like, how is it at the moment? You know, what is, what's the changes? Because I guess people are concerned about the virus in Fiji, but also Australians coming to Fiji. Like, how is it now? Okay, well, let's talk through it, right? So, um, again, a refresher on travelling to Fiji. Yes, you can travel to Fiji. You've got to do three days of, um, of isolation in a hotel that is certified. Um, if you go to Fiji Airways, Fiji Airways is flying. You can book packages through that way that allow you to have your, your three days and or five days. Um, and you have a whole lot of different accommodation that you could book. Um, but basically, it's planned in so that you can spend five days in a hotel. Um, and it ranges from very basic ones to the Sofitel, uh, which is five star. There's the Sheraton, there's the Hilton. Those are included in there. And then um, a little bit more of the budget stuff, right? And you can have it included with air, uh, flights and food. So have a look at that on the Fiji Airways website. No, this is not sponsored by Fiji Airways, though we'd welcome them to sponsor us. But um, Fiji Airways They have in the past. Up. They have in the past. They, yes. they have. They have in the past. They've sponsored a, a, quite a bit of our events. And you know, Fiji always looks after us. I thank you to the yeah, wonderful bless team them. at Fiji Airways. They do a good Love job. Them. This is free. I must. Free I must say, shout them, right? out to Fiji Airways staff in Nosori the other week. I had some issues, but then they were able to fix it up real quick. So shout out to the staff at Fiji Airways in Nosori at the check-in yes. counter. Very helpful. Fantastic. Yeah. Do you know what I, anyway, I, I love it, right? So 
I've been flying back and forth to Suva at the moment. You can get tickets as far as from Nandi to Suva for fifty dollars one way. I know. So, I love it. Right? Love it. Exactly. Right. It's cheaper than driving. So catch a plane. You're cheaper. there in half an hour. Go over there. Do your thing. Catch a catch a taxi up to Suva. Costs you about thirty dollars. It's still cheaper than catching a cab, right? Or going up private transport, which you want to do if you're going to travel up to Suva. So flights are cheaper than than land transport. Just a little tip there. But anyway, you can then get um, a packages through Fiji Airways where it includes food. It includes your flight for like $1,000 a person. How, how is the safety, though, the safety aspect of things? Okay. So basically, you still need to follow the protocol. you got to have a clear um, negative uh, PCR test. You can get that at the airport in Sydney. I believe they're about, what, $79? Um, 79 so you can get that immediately at the airport um, on arrival. Try to arrive. Uh, I think the recommendation is for you to arrive at the airport four hours before your flight. So you get there, you get your test straight away for seventy nine dollars, cheaper than getting it at uh, other places that are charging one hundred and fifty dollars, right? So um, get your rapid test at the airport. Turn around time an hour. You get it done when you arrive. Get in line. By the time you're still in line, because the the Process takes a long, you already got your result back. You can then go get a printout copy with a certified thing on it, right? So you're done with your test. You're ready to fly. Um, and so the packages are cheap. And then you stay at the hotel for three days. You have to have a transport organized as well, a certified transport. There's some really cheap ways to do that as well, right? So look around, shop around. Um, and there are cheaper ways for you to, to get your transport that'll cost you about $20 per person, $25 per person to transfer you from the airport to your hotel. You spend three days there. The way that it has been, for example, if you're staying in Denarau, Den, Denarau Island is a bubble. So you can actually um, stay in Denarau Island and roam around within there. There are certain activities that are also certified and approved so that you could go there. Like Cloud9 is a... Um, I believe some people went to Cloud9. Won't say any names, but um, you can see it on TikTok. (laughs) You can see it on TikTok. Yes, so you can then get um, approved. So you're not locked into your three days. Is what I'm saying is you can roam around um, and you can do activities that are approved, right? So it doesn't mean that you're totally stuck in the hotel. The important thing is they have someone to come and test you the next day. When you arrive, right, when you check into the hotel the next morning, they will have people at the airport, at, sorry, at your hotel to test you. And yes, then that's... you can, when you get a negative result, then you can leave, which is usually on the third day. That's correct. You can leave in the some hotels, hotel. They, yes, in some places they test you the next day. In some places they test you two days later, or you, and then they get the result. They, they give you the result right there. It's a rapid test. So um, it's a really, really good way to, to, to do that. And then you're allowed to leave. So you can then spend your time elsewhere. So don't be discouraged by it as long as you are double vaxxed and it's really, really good to have your third dose. It's a good excuse to say, hey, I'm traveling overseas. Can I get my booster now? Um, and because it's uh, the science effective on the Omnicron, uh, getting the booster earlier before travel is going to be very helpful as well for those that are wanting to travel, right? Fiji here, people are still masking up. You're still required to use the Fiji, what is it called again, that app? Um, Care Fiji app. Care Fiji. Yep, Care Fiji app, really easy to use. You scan the barcode as you do, um, and you get into venues. You still have to wear masks uh, going into a venue, and then you take it off if you're going to eat and stuff. So the rules in in Fiji is very similar to that in Australia, the requirements in venues and stuff. Omicron has arrived here, um, but they're going just like in New South Wales and other places. They're keeping the borders open. Really, it's a risk now of people who are non-vaccinated. So if you're not vaccinated, obviously you can't travel anyway. So people who are traveling can deal with the virus a lot better, right? 
Um, and if you've got the booster, apparently they say that it knocks it down pretty well because your immune system um, is really boosted to be able to fight against the Omicron uh, virus, which is known to be quite con contagious. So any other questions about Fiji? So then really any other questions for those listening in that you want to know about Fiji? Um, but it's pretty safe, fantastic to travel. Um, make sure as well you've got your insurance that covers you for your travel, that covers you for COVID. Um, and as they say, you, they won't allow you to travel anyway without insurance. So you've got to have all those things in place. They will check it at the airport. So make sure that you have your checklist. Um, and the Fiji Airways page has the checklist for you as well. Any other questions on that? No, I think it's good so that, you know, people that are concerned, you know, there's Fijians that are concerned about tourists and overseas gang bringing in the virus, but there's also people travelling to Fiji that just want to have a better idea of what's going on, you know. And I think, you know, we were talking about this earlier, we've got to be responsible ourselves. If you think yeah. that you're unwell, test yourself. Stay home. Don't visit elderly people in Fiji. Don't hug people. Don't share your damn bill or, you know, take your own exactly. cup. Don't do chuckies, like all that kind of stuff. Don't even share your kavura. You know, I noticed with the smokes, right, everyone want, everyone, everyone's drinking, they're all sharing the, a cigarette. So these are the habits that we have to change to stay healthy. That's right. and Very good point. Very good point. And it's interesting, like in certain venues, you're still not allowed to dance here. So... You know, mm. those those kind of restrictions are still somewhat there. What if we dance one and a half meter apart? Well, Does you know what? It, yeah, if you're over in the beach areas or you've got a spacious space because you're only allowed to have 50% capacity or something like that, like a normal venue. So it allows that sort of ability to socially distance yourself, yeah? Um, but you make a very important point there about that. I see a lot more people drinking with their own bottles or glasses. They're not doing the tacky stuff anymore. Uh, you're not even allowed to do it um, in the clubs. So a lot of that is changing. And you said the cigarette bit, you know, they can't monitor everybody. It's really up to you. We have to, to monitor ourselves. Stuff. Absolutely. I'm guilty as well. If you see me doing that, please slap my face. Slap it out of my mouth. Slap you're going to turn red. Mouth. You're going to turn red. So Not um, my face. Not my face. It. Out okay. Of my mouth. <laughs> oh, slap the cigarette off. You. Okay, right. You're not even yeah. supposed to be smoking. I know. You know. Anyway. Well, look at the time. It's 8.25. You... <laughs> um, yes. So what else would we say about Fiji? Oh, the other thing is, is um, yeah, just, just doing all those things will, will make sure you're safe. You know, if everybody... This is another tip for you. If you are thinking of coming, the week before you travel or two weeks before you travel, really tone down your going to events and things like that, right? Because you don't want to go and test and you test positive, especially with something contagious like Omicron, right? So my advice to you is stay away from big from events that's going to put it on a trip. If you test positive, you can't fly. And you got to go home and self-isolate and all that stuff, right? You don't want to be doing that. So my advice to you is we did as well. Trey, you did the same thing. The week of travel, within that seven days, just... Stay away from going to things, limit your, your exposure to possibilities and uh, places that could leave you um, vulnerable. So that's another tip Amen. for you there. So, and before you leave yeah. Fiji as well, do the same thing, you know, try to stay away from that because otherwise if you test positive, then you can't fly out you then got to do whatever is necessary until you get a negative test, whatever time period it requires. So just be mindful of that. Yeah. Good tips. Um, well, it's our last me. show. Mary our Jane. Last show for 2021. Talofa. It's our last show for 2021. Talofa, Mary Jane. Love you, Mary Jane. Miss you, Mary, Mary Jane. Mary Jane will be coming to you sometime soon. 
Ah, I miss Mary Jane. She's such a beautiful soul. And we had um, fun today. The kids had you? fun. Oh, I'm glad you got to see each other today. Lots of love to you, Mary Jane. Wishing you, hope you had a wonderful Christmas and um, hoping that you have an amazing new year. And I'm glad yes, that you indeed. and Trey are plot, plotting. And there's lots of exciting things happening over here that we could plot together. Yeah? Amen. Thank you. Love said, that blue. Oh, my gosh. I just noticed that. That had lines. <laughs> I've never worn. I don't wear this T-shirt. What have you got on? Well, it's 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 not a Pacific label. It's a. Oh, it's okay. an, I, I went to the oh. beach, so I thought I'd wear a Nordica, Nordica type top. Yes. Anyway, nice. so it's our last show. You know, this is number eight, number seventeen. We've done many of these and shared so much info. So we started because of COVID, and to share info and all yes. of that, and then we just continued, and we're you know, having a ball doing this and learning so much. And who knows what 2022 will have in store for Vaitalanoa. But we're going to have a bit of a break, yes, through Jan and then come back again strong after the holidays. Is that yes. the plan? That is the plan. So um, this will be our last episode of it in this format. So, you know. This was, as, as Trey mentioned, this is how we set it up during COVID and just ran with it. And it's our 17th show, which means 17 weeks of this um, because we've been doing it every Monday. So coming into 2022, there's going to be uh, lots of other people involved and contribution to the show. Um, but we also change the format and how we go about it. And um, so Trey and I won't be the only hosts, but we also make it a broader show that it's not just about how we we're doing in Sydney. The next one is going to be more global. We're going to get a global host team together and we'll be contributing from different places uh, around the world. Of course, including coming to you live from Fiji as well. Yeah. Amen. And, and Trey, what are your parting words of wisdom to everyone um. for 20 one. What are your thoughts? What are you contemplating for yourself and things that you'd like to share with us? Oh, there's a, there's a lot of things in the pipeline. And, you know, I love that we created these formats, this one here, and then also with Mary Jane as well, um, the, the Oceania 2 um, platform as well. And, you know, I love that we've created this stuff out of nothing and, and because out of necessity for our community and ourselves. And then from there, opportunities are growing, you know, and I look forward to more of this happening in the new year and, and ways for us to share our stories and our communities to grow, you know, so to strengthen and, and empower each other. So I look forward to that, you know, in the new future. Um yeah, and I'm just excited. To be honest, I don't really have an indication of where I'm going at the moment. I usually am very clued on to my pathways through life, but at the moment I feel like I'm in no man's land where I don't really know what's going on, but I'm just trusting the Lord and trusting the process that it's a transitional period before the next phase. You know, God is good and he always has us and our people. Um, so that that's how I'm vibing. I think I need to come home. Oh, um, to beautiful. be honest. Um, but Sev, um, we got some pretty sad news, didn't we, in the last couple of days? Did, did you want to yes, share did. a bit? Yes. Um, for those of you, we we want to send our our thoughts and prayers and condolences out to the um, Phillips family. Um, we lost a beautiful uh, soul, a great contributor to Fiji. Um, and that is not only internationally that people may know him, but locally he's tremendous. And that's Colin um, Philip, who, um, who passed away um, this earlier this week, uh, sorry, uh, last few days in, um, in Sydney. And so we just want to send and our thoughts, our prayers, um, and condolences to the family. 
um, who are in sorrow right now and also families and friends. He is much loved. He's contributed so much. Um, one of the things that I just want to mention his contribution for is with um, with the Utunialo and the Utunialo Trust. Um, and most of you may think of it, Mary Jane. Um, you may remember um, the, of course, you would remember the, um, the Utunialo coming to Sydney and we had the, the, um, the Oceania Festival in Darling Harbour. Um, and who actually contacted um, me and um, we facilitated that whole happening was Colin was, um, that was his dream out of Fiji. And we were able to, to manifest that. And of course, Oceania Festival happened in Sydney. Um, and that was the man behind that was Colin Fields. And we just want to pay tribute um, to, to Colin um, for his wonderful work. Um, also, he ran the resort in Lelovia, which um, um, some of us love going to and uh, slowly we'll miss. Lelovia won't be the same um, without Colin there, always looked after us well. I've spent many years uh, traveling to Lelovia and it's been great trade working with him. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with such a great man. Um, and it's that we've, you know, um, now lost him. Um, but we have such wonderful thoughts in our hearts because he's left us with an incredible legacy. The work he's done in Lelovia, which is revolutionary as far as an eco resort, his work with the Utunialo Trust, he being an incredible navigator and teacher and mentor to so many. And the amount of charity work that he did, um, the legacy just goes on and on. So true. Um, th this is, um, you know, it's one of the things that I remember you know, when he came to Sydney that time is how he talked about his dad's, um, you know, his dad's belief in, in um sustainable sea travel and how he wanted to continue that, you know, and so that's what he was doing with helping with the Utonialo and all these sustainable methods of sea travel, going back to what the way that our ancestors travelled, you know, and so that's what he was passionate about. He was passionate about um, environmentalism, you know, like this is where Lyric and I first went at Lela Via, which is, you know, this is one of the huts that you remember, right, from Lela Via, you know, all natural um, materials and just living off the land and they went out and fished for Aww. tuna and brought that and then we had tuna for lunch and then they told us to go coral you know we went and learned how to plant coral Co planting. You know, so we learned, yes. yeah we in the ocean you know to help um rebuild rebuild the reef like you know we learned so much about nature just going out to Lelovia but also you know so many people like you said have been inspired by the work that he's done and you know my thoughts and go out to everyone especially Anne the family the kids everyone impacted yes. the siblings you know the extended families the work families um, and you know it's a shame this year we've lost two amazing people that well, revolutionary, you know, in, in sea travel and um, environmentalism. And I know it's only going to inspire those that have been left behind to continue this work, you know, to ensure that our culture and our lands and our seas are taken care of. So yes. our thoughts and prayer was with Colin and, you know, on his final journey, travel well. And thank you so much for all you've done for so many of us. Amen to will that. will definitely thank be missed. Yeah. So true, so true. And Trey, while we're at it and we're talking about that, it's okay that we've gone over time. Um, that's a good thing about having your own show because you can then decide, yeah, we're going over time. Um, the other thing as well that we just want to, to, um, to mention is um, uh, another one that we've lost is Big Paul. Paul to <gasps> Rai. Yes. Um, we weren't able to, we didn't have a show uh, while that was happening, but we just want to 
um, acknowledged the passing of Paul as well. Um, wow, what can we say about Big Paul? Um, so he passed about two weeks ago and in the States. Um, so we want to send our condolences out to the family as well. Our thoughts and prayers are with them to his, his lovely wife and his children. And Big Paul, wow, Motown, ex-Motown uh, executive. Um, originally from Tonga, raised in the USA, did amazing things out there in the USA, um, worked with incredible people, um, Trey from, from everywhere, right? If you ever have seen the context and the network that Paul had, was insane. Yet, mm. one of the most beautiful, humble souls, you know. Um, he came into my life and just the, the giving nature of Big Paul, the way that he would share and want to contribute to you as much as he could. He was so much about giving and he will link you to whoever he you'd like that he has connections to, you know when you make the connection with Big Paul and he just wanted you to grow and flourish. And he did that for so many people, so many people in the music industry. He was able to mentor and introduce and share his context, you know? His context is just, just think about it. Motown executive, he's linked to everybody. If you've ever looked Motown. at his page, you'll see And, and also hip hop, context. you know, early hip hop as well like really? a lot of the one of the first hip-hop shows in america college shows he was a part of that the sway and tech show i mean i used to buy the cassette tapes when i was a kid to get access hip-hop music so he was there for a lot of early hip-hop and r&b acts and helped to influence you know universal records helped to sign a lot of these great acts and also paved the path for a lot of pacific artists mm. you know from aotearoa yeah. and from hawaii as well so um beautiful person one way we had was about nfts i was talking to him about cryptocurrency and he was like i know so and so has just created you know this platform and he was going to link me to them to talk to them someone you know in his contacts in the states but like you said that was poor always connecting very humble but always trying to connect us Absolutely. And he would do anything to try and help you along the way to contribute, you know, uh, a man full of resources and, and network. And he was just incredible. You know, we could just devote a whole program to how brilliant he was. The last thing that Paul and I were talking about was Langani Rambukawanga, which is a Fijian singer. Way I remember back. him. Yes. Langani Rambukawanga, who is based in Hawaii. And um, oh. Paul was saying, Paul was saying, can you please get us some, uh, I still want this album, this particular album of Langani. And he was wanting that. And I was going to source it for him while I was in Fiji again. He reminded me, you know, and it's just like, oh man, big Paul, I really wanted to get you that Langani album. So I'm still going to find it and I'm going to play those music and think of you um, in honor of you. What a great man. So much love to to his um, family and thank you big paul for leaving us um with so much and your legacy continues two great people and we've got over but okay amen yeah. amen thank you for um, sharing that beautiful thank you did you want to share anything else friend. about big paul I think that's it. You've definitely shared, you know, who he was and how much he meant to so many of us. And yeah, it's such a shame. We've lost some, you know, good people in the last few months, but they're gone to heaven. Yeah. They're on a better journey. Yeah. Well, well you know, I believe is, is that it's just a door that is closed, which is in this realm, in this dimension. And it opens up to other dimensions that they still remain here with us. So, um, you know, in, in our human ways and in the way that we want to make it mean and think about it is we've lost somebody. Um, I love that saying, it's lost is heaven's gain, you know? So it's, it talks about it in a, in, a, in a dimension that this is a physical earthly dimension. There's a heavenly dimension 
And, you know, their presence, their spirit um, is eternal and it continues to live with us. And, um, you know, it's wonderful that they've left us with so many goodness. And I still feel I'm close to my heart. That's how I see it. So much love Amen. to them. Love and light. Yeah. Um, yes. Now we're finishing up the show. Um, so I will just say my parting words straight. Um, so for me, it is definitely has been a beautiful ending to a year. I am so excited. I'm working right through. We work today, uh, me and my team, and we're working right through till Thursday. And then we're having Friday off. off. Um, so the 31st, but we're working right through getting stuff done, which we will share more in the new projects that I'm doing over here. Um, and so it's really, really exciting. Um, blessed. Um, feel very, very blessed. And I just want to acknowledge the divine um, God, um, the universe, where, however you may connect with, with the higher power. Um, for for the blessings that I've received, you know, and I'm so grateful for it and doors that have been created from doors, opportunities, and I feel really, really privileged and blessed to be where I am, and I'm looking forward to what's ahead. My heart is open, my arms are open to receive and to give, um, and the saying goes, the scripture that I love, one of the ones that I hold close to, it says, um, to whom much is given, much is required. And so for those of us that are privileged and blessed, who've been able to live overseas, who've been able to have those education, those opportunities, um, I have the possibility as well to be able to share, to be able to help, to be able to path, uh, pave pathways and create opportunities as well, not only for ourselves, but for others. So. Um, that is what my prayer is. I'm excited about the opportunities that lays ahead. And I just want to thank you, Trey, for your heart and for all that you've contributed, especially to Vic Talanoa, since this is our last program for 2021. We want to thank all those that have also contributed to the show throughout. Um, it's really been a time of giving. For us, it was, this is a sign of what we could then do. There's been thousands of views um, of the show organically every week. Um, and we're really, really grateful that we're able to provide this platform and share our stories, share the journey, share the challenges, um, be able to provide information, shed some light on things, try to make it warm and, and you know, supportive in our communities and have the conversations and have those dialogues that was perhaps missing for some people, especially those that felt very isolated during the times of lockdown and so forth. So um, thank you, Trey, for seeing, the, for seeing the vision of it and for sharing the vision with me and being on the journey um, for us to be able to, to do this. And you've contributed your own time as well, your own resources, as we've done to make this happen on a weekly basis. Um, it, it's something that we've done to be able to give it's not something that we've been paid for to do. This is something that's come from our heart. So we hope that those out there would receive it in the same way and know that that comes from a place of love for us um, and to be able to do this. So thank you, Trey. I just want to acknowledge you for your contribution in all of this as well. Thank you so much. Very blessed to have this opportunity and I look forward to it. It's been fun and people always say we, we're such a vibe on, on screen. You and I, they can see that how we connect well. And I know that there's so much more in store for 2022. Yes. So coming for Amen. me and you. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. All right, everyone. Let's thank go. you. Yes, let's go. So I'm going to say my goodbye and then I'm going to give it over to Trey to do something. Open mic and, and and get us out of here, right? So big lolomo to everyone. God bless you. Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2021. And let's put it over to Miss MC Trey to take us out. Come on. Oh, there's nothing for us today. I just want to say hey, hey, because I can't rhyme without the beat. But it's okay. It's all sweet. So I'll say so you, uh, peace. No, it's I'm 2021. 
You sure they you won't be able to hear it. Why? That's fine. Here we go. Are we ready? Here we go. Here. Come on. Oh, yes. Turn it up. Turn my headphones on. One, two, one, two. Yes, we're coming for you. 2020, 21. Yes, it wasn't very fun, but that's okay. Because we keep pushing through. Yes, we kind of got stunned with the vaccine, but it's not a scene. It's not a white screen. But you know, it can be a dream. We have true. Yes, it needs the team. Trey and Sev, this is how we like to rock. Because you know what's coming off the head. Straight off the dome, freestyling with the rhymes. Hand it over to the next one. One time, 2022, we're coming for you. I said 2022, you know we're coming for you. I said 2022, we're coming for you. I said 2022, we're coming for you. Let's go. We're coming for you. There you go. (laughs) That's going to be our challenge now for New Year's Eve. We're coming for you. 2022, coming for you. Yes, there you go. We'll have more of that next week. <laughs> Goodbye, Thank you everybody. so much, everyone. Mother, take care. God bless. Love you all. God bless. Bye. Bye. <laughs> No retreat, no surrender. That's the message of the sender.